Welcome to Writing with Dyslexia. And today I am going to talk about uh, controversial uh, topics. I'm going to talk about uh, <clears throat> how to write them and um, and what I've done uh, personally um, uh, that very few people actually read. Uh, and I did. Uh, uh, there was... Uh, the conduit which I wrote uh, and still writing to this day um, and then there's that uh, uh, erotica that I wrote uh, that pertained to people uh, to oh, it was two women that were lesbians it's a lesbian couple and um, <clears throat> and how and how I wrote about that uh, uh, even though uh, I have, even though I'm, I'm I'm a Christian, and even though a lot of that, a lot of the, uh, the topics that I wrote w was against uh, my faith personally, and how <clears throat> and how I, I and the reasons why I wrote it. Okay, the reasons why I wrote it. Um, first of all. <clears throat> uh we we as writers make things up okay that's what we do we lie <laughs> that's what writers do uh we just we just make this story um from scratch from out of thin air and then we um uh, and we put it to paper and and uh some like it some don't and it's just the way it is life isn't always going to be as black or as white um, there's always going to be uh, shades of gray here and there and what's kind of nice and here's how I look at it okay if you're an artist who draws with uh, with a charcoal pen or a, you know charcoal um, you the thick dark lines is what is what you're creating a picture of it could be a, a person's face it could be a, a scenery you know or whatever but when an artist uses his hand you know, he uses his finger and then starts to smooth out um, some of those th thick lines and smears it okay into places where he wants it to, to smear it that's your gray there's your grays you know, your shades of grays there's different levels of grays there's different levels of black there's different you know and everything sorry um so the grays is the shadows of which the picture is going to um is going to enhance okay I think writing is a lot like that. I think um, if we um, if we use the shades of gray as far as uh, morals and you know in our you know in our writing, it, it's not something that you would do personally. It's not something that you believe in, okay, personally, but it is something that is um, that's realistic okay um it makes that story pop more because of those gray areas okay uh we hate to i think we hate to admit it and you know and um i know i, I grew up with parents that you know you know that um they would like everything to be as black and white as possible with no it would be boring the story would have no life to it okay I want to talk about the conduit the original <laughs> the the original uh, conduit that I wrote uh, and I think it was I think it was Claire it was either Tina or Claire I can't remember what the woman's name was and she worked for a newspaper company okay and in, in in my story the conduit and she um, You didn't know, <clears throat> sorry, 
uh, you didn't know that um, all you knew, okay, let me say this. All you knew was that she had surgery done and all you knew was that she <clears throat> was, re you know, recuperating from surgery. And I uh, hinted at the fact that her abdominal muscles were, you know, were, were cut, okay, through the surgery and everything. She, she could have had a tumor. She could have had cancer, I guess. I don't know. Um, but uh, she, uh, she was recuperating and she was sore and she was miserable. Absolutely miserable, okay? It was... It, it was a couple chapters, uh, I think, um, that uh, uh, her assistant, David, which were starting to have a, a love affair with each other, uh, but she was still recuperating from her surgery, okay? He goes out and, and, uh, or, and he already ordered pizza and he was picking it up and all kinds of food, you know? And, uh, and then moments later, the knock falls on the door. Okay. So she looks through the people thinking it might be David, but she want to make sure because I think it was in Philadelphia, if I'm not mistaken, because I Philadelphia, New York, they were, you know, uh, the, the story was happening on both, uh, cities. So <clears throat> anyway, she looks through people, she says, she sees a woman standing there, and she knows who it is. She knows it's Richard, and she knows it's her boss's, um, her boss's, uh, wife, okay? And, um, and she puts her back up against the door and doesn't want to talk to this woman. She's just not in a mood, and she want and she knows why she's there. Because they had an affair, okay? She had an affair with him. And and it's understandable, you know, that she... And she understands why she's there, okay? Um, but she knows that she has to face the music. She knows that she can't get a, a, around that, okay? So she, did, so she opens up the door and lets her in and pretends that she doesn't know what she's there for because she might not be there for that you know she she wants to make sure if her um you know she just wants to make sure that you know why she's there and finally uh richard's wife which i cannot remember her name <laughs> it's been so long uh she uh she walks in she's she's angry she f shows the receipt from the jewelry store that her husband bought this ring and her address was right, you know, written all over it. And it, it possibly because he had it delivered to her, okay? And so he, he bought it, yeah, probably uh, through phone and then had it delivered same day, you know, and everything. And so she starts crying and she's really upset and she's she's taking it out on um i don't want to call her claire uh, on claire you know the one that had surgery and so um after she spoke after richard's wife spoke her piece claire decides she didn't want to do it she wanted to keep it completely a secret because she didn't want any pity for her, you know. Um, and she felt that, you know, Richard's wife deserves to know the truth. So she said, and she, she tells Richard's wife, Claire tells her, I had an abortion done, okay. And what you have lost, you can regain because... Your husband's not dead. The ring is in my jewelry box. You can have both of them. Okay. If you want it. That's only if you want it. Okay. And if you if you don't want it, then fine. Just walk away. Then why you know don't don't come back here. Okay. 
but and that's basically how I wrote it. Okay, a lot of it's paraphrasing, but that's pretty much how I wrote it. And she goes on and says, you know, I did not want uh, Richard to feel guilty and know and know that he made a mistake with me by having an affair. Okay, your marriage wasn't doing well. Uh, we were good, were good friends, and it, one thing just led to another, and and we were, you know, we were together for a while. I broke it off as soon as I found out I was pregnant, and I didn't want child support for him. I didn't want anything. You know, the, Claire is a very, uh, she she doesn't need anybody. Okay. And that's, that's what was so cool about that version of the conduit. It was because of the fact that she was so strong and strong, you know, strong-headed, pig-headed type of person. But then she realizes she actually does get pregnant again through David, which is a 20-some-year-old uh, kid, really. She's 38, you know, she's 38 years old. And uh, in her baby was supposed to be kind of mystical and magical you know and all, all that so um as a christian no i do not support abortion but i do not in any way condemn anybody who had one okay i have known quite a few women uh that went through that and god bless them and that's how i feel about it and, and, it's, and some were really they were at peace with it, which is, I'm, I'm grateful for, you know what I mean? And then some are still living with the guilt of doing that, okay? And um, I, I, in no way would I ever be a hypocrite by, by chastising someone who has done something that I feel is, is wrong. Abortion is the gray, okay? The story is about yeah well it, it's 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 about uh people with supernatural abilities okay the gray of her of her having an abortion was a really it was a really good shade okay it gave the it gave character more um a three-dimensional look you know you you saw her in a different way you're you're seeing the character build through her, through all of this you know um you never write claire's a very strong woman she's independent uh she she basically tells everyone to go fuck themselves uh, you, you know i mean do it through the actions of what your character is um you know you know and then and then have the reader draw their own conclusion about that um my erotica which was <laughs> horribly written by the way um, but it was well received on Wattpad. It was actually really well received on Wattpad. I thought I was going to get a lot of flack from it. I'm, I'm a male. I'm not lesbian. <laughs> I'm not a female. And I'm straight <laughs> on top of everything, you know. And, and you, would, you would think that, you know, younger girls, like 18, 20-year-old girls would just give me such hate mail and they did not actually i was actually well received uh, my 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 book was so i would say so controversial that it was actually being distributed in wattpad but it was poorly written i did not like i didn't like it i i like parts of it and i think it was really good i just didn't know where to go with it i just didn't know where to go with it and with so many uh, changes to the story uh, people started getting a little irritated <laughs> because I kept changing the story constantly, and that's just the way it is. That's uh, Ernest Hemingway said: uh, "The true form of writing is rewriting." And ain't, ain't, ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? But I thought it'd be kind of interesting to have people, you know, see, you know, um, the story develop. And, and see the changes being made to it and everything. And I understand, you know, I understand people, people are going to read your chapter once, basically. They're not going to read it again. But anyway, so, uh, I think her name was Lisa. I can't remember the other woman's name, a girl's name. She was young. She was 20, 19, 20 years old. 
she's again 30 she's 38 this woman's 38 years old too a lot of it was based on how i was feeling at the time okay so lisa was really going through uh you know like wanting changes done to her life midlife crisis type type of deal um i don't know if i ever i don't know if i ever really really went through one i'm not i'm not i'm just just kind of putting myself in in a situation um what a person of a midlife crisis would do it's not i don't think i personally don't think it would be any different than what a woman or a man goes through i think it's i i, th I just think the choices are different that's all and, and uh and i think that's fair to say so sh the the book starts out with her doing a se sexy dance with her silky slip black silky slip her moves are her uh, i'm sorry her hips are swaying back and forth in a rhythmic type pattern her boyfriend is has her has his hands tied to the headboard it's one of those things okay and she's playing summertime uh sang by uh janice joplin which personally is my one of my favorite if you like blues okay and you like rhythm and blues type type of music janice joplin is it she is awesome i absolutely love her um because ella fitzgerald sung summertime okay she sung summertime and 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 then Janis Joplin sang it, and she, I think she brought it to a whole new level of that song. Be, and I, I tear up every time I hear Janis Joplin sing it because it's beautiful. Because the way she's singing it is she's telling that person not to cry. You know, you, you, you know, uh, everything's going so well for you. Your father's rich. Your your mother's beautiful, uh, and the cotton is high. And, and and she's telling, you know, hush, don't cry. And the way of her raspy voice makes it sound like she's trying hard not to cry herself. That's why I like it. That's why I like how she sung it. It's so wonderfully done. So she's playing Summertime because it gets her in the mood. It gets her in the mood. But anyway, fast forward through the through the sex ex escapade of that okay she knows her and it's it's david i didn't realize i was using the same characters uh to, for, for, uh for, but that was before you know all this but anyway um she knows david is having an affair okay this is my secret uh my, i'm sorry my my sexual um uh, adventure my sexual adventure book uh that i wrote she knows her husband her husband her boyfriend is having an affair she, she, he's working late he's a lawyer he's he is getting ready for a big case that would prop that would boost him into um into a um um a partnership with the law firm okay all of that's true okay but he he did have he is having an affair and you'll learn later that she and he got her pregnant okay and everything but deep down inside her okay deep down inside lisa she wants something else she does she's been with men she would she feels it's a time to change and and to um have an adventure a sexual adventure if you will some would kind of call it a female empowerment uh type of thing i didn't i just I, I think it was just one of those i've colored inside the lines of the coloring book now i just want to be a little rebellious now i just want to have some fun before before I turn 40, before I turn 50 and 60 and so on and so forth. I just want, you know, you know, as, there's a poem that says, why drink from the teacup when you can drink from the ocean? Uh, and it's true, you know, um, life is the ocean. Um, if you're too afraid, 
you're only gonna you're only going to sip a little bit of what life can bring you okay and i can relate to her i really can and basically you know i think your protagonists are pretty much you it doesn't matter if you're a male it's, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's a male or female character it's it's a little bit of it's who you are i i feel okay stephen king seems to kind of in, in in some ways i feel he removes himself personally f from the story i that could be that could be my authentic voice as a as a writer i just you know i i put my a little bit my myself in that character so i dude i used to um color inside the line and i still do okay you know i'm not <laughs> i'm not this badass that just wants to do whatever you know i just do what i want to do <laughs> type of thing it doesn't work that way uh not reality anyway uh so um <clears throat> so uh she has a crush on her boss okay at work she's a, a tall uh, redhead very attractive woman and she's always had this fantasy of having sex with her you know oh you know at work as they close the doors for the day <laughs> you know she has all she has this, this sexual uh, uh tension you know uh with her so um speed up a little bit um she she starts crying before this before uh the bank opens because she's a bank teller her boss very sympathetic she knows they're good friends and she goes won't you take the day won't you take the week if you need the week after that take that because you got uber amount of time take it okay you never called out sick you never used vacation it's time for you and take the day and find who you are and that's what she does she she goes to the uh, uh salon gets the whole works done her hair her nails her feet she gets everything done you know she buys new makeup new outfits she gets new everything and then she gets a new girlfriend you know and that's where you know and it, she goes to starbucks and this girl hits on her hard you know and she likes it and she was nervous okay because she really want she wants to experience this for the first time and so she and she knows she's older and she knows she's young so she gives out her number she gives out the barista gives out her number and it, it took a while for her to call okay it's just kind of like how reality would but finally she does call and uh and her um boyfriend is not at home he's he's in the office and he calls her says you know i'm not going to be home so and then you know, wouldn't you know that girl from the from starbucks calls her and she goes do you want to spend the night with me so that that's by that was kind of to me that was a very controversial story and you know, maybe not to a lot of people today but to me i'm old school um it is controversial it was very uncomfortable it was to some degree very uncomfortable for me to write but that was a good thing it was a good exercise in writing and something that you're not comfortable with I think we i think as writers we all should do that okay um you know it could be interracial relationships but you're not against it okay you're not against it but you you, you you're a little hesitant about it okay and if you're a, a white person or a black person write about it you know it, especially if you feel uncomfortable about it because it forces you to see the other side of that person okay of what they go through my father um you know was a closet homosexual really for most part um and he you know and um and he's he's dead now he passed away at two th uh 2017 okay um i just wished that he was honest um you know w about it okay 
Um, and sometimes if we don't like something about ourselves, the best thing we could do is talk about it so that the sting isn't as bad as, you know what I mean? And if you want to make that change that you don't like, then then you can do so. And you already, ex you already spoke your piece, so to speak, okay, about it. Um, but you know, he thought he pretty much took it to the grave with them, but it, it was self-evident that that wasn't so, <laughs> you know, unfortunately for him. But, um, but you know, would I thought of my father any different? No. Uh, I really, I mean, I guess you would, but not, you know, I mean, I knew my dad was different, very different from other, from other dads, okay? Um, you know, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm dyslexic. I'm different. I, you know, I'm always going to be different. I'm always going to uh, have, you know, just different outlooks on things because of that. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm absolutely grateful for that. Controversy is a hard thing to write. It can be. I liked how I wrote the abortion. Okay, I don't like I said. I don't like, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm against it, but I understand why some women will do it. Okay, and that's not for me to judge or criticize or anything. But it's something I would like to explore in my writing. Why? Why a, a woman in this case? She was actually being pretty noble about it. She <laughs> didn't want to tell anybody about it. Richard's wife was the one that forced her hand in talking about it. Okay, so you know, um, and and it and it made Richard's wife feel this big. It really did because it, she's real. She's like, holy hell, she's going through a lot worse. And then, and that's what I wrote too. And she was like, oh my gosh, you're going through all this, and here I am talking to you like this, you know, and everything. So. Um, we need controversy, but we also need to be respectful when we are doing controversy. Okay. Um, even, even if you're respectful to the person, okay. And, or, or to whatever, even if you are being respectful and being controversial, you're going to get backlashes. Stephen King gets tons of it. Okay. Stephen King is a good example. It was a very good example. He, he's not gay. He's a straight guy. And he wrote, he had uh, homosexual characters in that story. And they, and he also talked about gay bashing, you know, uh, violence against you know, homosexuals. He wrote that. Okay. It's an, it's an it. Okay. And there's a few other times he's written about homosexuals and, and what they go through and everything. I, I don't have a problem with it. I like it. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I wish more, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I don't, you know, it, it, as far as I, you, are you afraid of being canceled? It, it happens, it happens. I don't, you know, I, I'll live. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to come into my house, drag me in the middle of the night and beat me with coins or something <laughs> like that, you know, beat me with sticks. <laughs> you know, if that happens, well, then, and, you know, um, uh, ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, then so be it. I really don't care. Ah, fudge. All right. Uh, I really don't care. I mean, you know, um, we, we all have the right to say what we want to say. Um, and Bill Maher is the other, other side of the spectrum of, of controversy. He's doing it just to be mean. He's just doing it just to be spiteful. He's just, you know what I mean? And, um... Oh, Dan! Jeez. Uh... There, there's nothing good about it, okay? He's gotten... He sounds a little bit more conservative these days than he has. He's still liberal, okay? And I don't care. Look, I don't care if you're uberly liberal. I don't care if you're uberly conservative, you know? Um... Everyone has that right to say what they want to say, and 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 um, but 
even if they're not being respectful they still have the right to say it but you're just you know you might not be getting that you know and i mean he's still popular and he's still on tv he's still wealthy he's still i would say somewhat famous i don't know if how super famous he is and everything he started out and stand up and everything um you know but when you know when, when your controversy becomes more violent and your controversy becomes more tasteless okay um and and, and hurtful to others um you might want to take a step back okay but if you're it, but if you're exploring controversial topics like abortion and, and sexuality, be respectful because people uh, that are reading your stuff is going is going to have or they're probably going through that. Okay, uh, Bill Maher, uh, I pray for him as a Christian. I really do. Uh, you know, I pray for Barack Obama and I pray for uh, Bin Laden, or Bin Laden, I'm sorry. Well, we, I guess we should pray for him, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, um, um, Joe Biden, sorry. <laughs> Bin Laden just, I don't know. <laughs> there might That might be just controversial right there. But... <laughs> But uh, I, I pray for those. I do pray for those people, and I, you know, like I said, I'm a Donald Trump supporter. I pray for him because they're all human beings. At the end of the day, you know, we all, we all peep and we all peep, we all pee and poop, you know, and um, we're just people, and we all need prayers and we all need guidance from somewhere, and um, um. But yeah, that's that's about it. That's all I can really think of, actually, um, about controversy. You know, uh, you're going to find your own topic, and your own, and you might already know a topic, but you're just too afraid to do it, okay, and and to write it because you're afraid. That I was scared to death of writing my sexual adventure because i thought people would like how you know you're well i was i was in my mid 40s i'm 40 i just turned 47 in may may 12th you know so how would you under know that i actually had a teacher tell me that yeah how can you write in, in, from a female point of view i don't know and i said how did uh shelly uh shelly uh, uh mary shelly that wrote Frankenstein how did she write from a masculine point of view she wrote from a male's point of view ah touche <laughs> and Stephen King he's he's written from a homosexual point of view he also wrote he, he's written things from from other people's points of view if you're a good writer you can do this because you're observing you he's not Stephen King isn't saying that he knows everything what it's like to be gay or a woman or you know, well man obviously but you, you know what I mean you know um, you know he's I actually written um, uh, uh, it was uh, the cons uh, institution it was the institution where the black it was an overweight black uh, sheriff uh, yeah sheriff uh, in a small town um, uh, but he's not saying that he knows what he, he you know he knows everything is to be a black sheriff in a small town <laughs> it's just observing it's just a lot of it's guessing too and uh, you know and if you have friends you know if you want to write uh, an african-american character or whatever in in you work with somebody who is and talk to them if you, want, if you want to write about a jewish person and you work with a jewish person and they are practicing you know jewish and they're practicing their faith okay then talk to them the only way as writers we're going to get better is if we talk to those who are different from us that would make our story even better you know and and i had someone actually said to me thank you so much for not being political in your stories your your component someone asked me it was uh rajan he's he's a french canadian 
And he said to me, he goes, with all the shit that's happening in the world, you're sitting here writing stories. And I said, yeah. And and uh, it, uh, it's actually been a great stress release. It has been. It's just been fun. Um, if this just is just a hobby of mine, so be it. And, and if I can make money off of it, so be it. Um, I would like to write full time. I really would. I think it's a lot. I think it, this is a lot of fun, you know, to do. In other words, as a writer, you got a lot of power, and words are very powerful. Okay, they're very powerful. There's a there's a scene uh, there. Well, there's an episode of Doctor Who, you know, and Fe Friedman. I think that was. I thought she was so freaking hot. I liked her. She's so beautiful, such a beautiful woman. Uh, she was one of the companions of the Doctor, and and she was a doctor. She's a doctor herself, you know, and and I I thought it was really cool. I I really in, enjoyed that character. And they met Shakespeare. They meet, yeah, you know, they meet William Shakespeare, you know, through time. And um, and uh, and Shakespeare goes, "Oh, you're a time traveler. You know, you're you're obviously an alien from another, you know, from another world, and you're a time traveler." And he goes, "Well, it's obvious, isn't it?" <laughs> I like that. But what Freeman, his companion, Doctor, you know, uh, on Doctor Who. Uh, she says to the doctor, she goes, she goes, ah, but words are as small as a TARDIS, but big inside. Ain't that the truth? Uh, words are very small, but have such a huge impact on people. Uh, it can make you ha laugh, can make you cry, and it can make you angry, and it can make you frustrated, you know? That's powerful. That's extremely powerful. Tell somebody, have a good day, you know, have a nice day. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, oh, you know, it's no pro problem. Then tell, and then give a middle finger and, and give an F word, an F bomb to somebody and see how fast that changes. Okay. That's a good point, you know. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not want to try to be Spider-Man here, but you know, with great power is comes with a great responsibility, and it's true. Um, so, if you are given a gift of writing, use it wisely, and don't spare, don't don't spare it, you know, but use it wisely, and um, and write things that are sad. Uh, opinionated and controversial because we you know we really do need that we don't need to be shirking our responsibilities as writers and not writing things that are controversial but we need to be mindful of them and that's it and that's really all I have so thank you so much for watching um, your um, I want to thank the 11 subscribers that I got from this channel. I know this is uberly, uberly um, sp 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 yeah, um, audience specific, okay? Because who wants to talk about writing, right? Um, but uh, I hope this helped a lot of a lot of you. Um, if this is a subject you want me to expand on in the future, I have no problem in doing so. Uh, you know, and use other ex examples of contra you know, which con which is good controversy versus bad controversy. And I think that's just the problem of society today is that we don't know what is good and what is bad anymore, and that's really dangerous. That's a very dangerous thing. So that's it. And guys, have a good one. And um. And I'll see you around. I am planning on writing, or I am planning on um, reading the Iron Badger. I know uh, reading uh, the Conduit <laughs> to me it was a disaster. Maybe not. Maybe maybe it's just how I perceived it. But I uh, but the 
Iron Badger is, and I want to thank Megan for helping me with the editing. She's been a, a godsend with the editing, even though she takes a lot of abuse from me uh, when she gives gives me her <laughs> her her critiques <laughs> and her opinions on things. I get frustrated and I take it out on her, but. And she's been a great uh, editor for me. Uh, my 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 stuff is sounding so so professional. Have a one. Have a good one, and take care. See ya.